Tonight we're painting clowns on eggs. Yes, that's a thing. Let's see if you recognize this particular clown. I've used organic, free-range plastic eggs because I don't want them going bad. To give this egghead a nose, I've gruesomely dismembered a foam packing bead and grafted it on like some kind of craftwork Frankenstein. Next, it's time to give this fool a face. The details are primarily crimson, the color of all the creepiest things, like blood, guts, and Elmo. Having already butchered Garfield off-screen, we can start using what's left of him to make our Cackleberry a little less bald. Finally, we eviscerate a cardboard roll so that we can make a stand for the egg. To this, we attach a colorful mangle of felt, frills, and poms. That's what we clown egg industry professionals call pom-poms. This will represent their costume. So now we're ready for the big egg reveal. Have you picked who it is yet? Coming to you from beautiful downtown Fortitude Valley. It's the Scary Ghoul Show. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the program. Welcome also to this year's distressingly late Halloween special. Spooky technical difficulties and eerie health issues held the whole thing up to a positively cringeworthy degree. And don't worry, not that health issue. I think those cheap Chinese plastic eggs had a cheap Chinese plastic curse on them. Just think of this as an atypically spooky Hanukkah special, I guess. For reasons I can't personally comprehend, lots of people are scared of clowns. I mean, arachnophobia is an extension of irrational fear, but how many people do you know that have been bitten by poisonous jesters? I can count them on one hand, personally. Because clowns give people the spooks and Halloween is the holiday most associated with eggs, I'm sure I'm not forgetting anything. We decided to make clown eggs. No, this is not how you breed baby clowns, thank god. Reputable clowns get their makeup copyrighted with Clowns International, who immortalize their members' faces on that most majestic of canvases, the chicken fruit. No joke! So I thought it would be an amusing Halloween jape <laughs> an amusing Decemberween jape to make a dozen famous creepy clowns their very own clown eggs. We'll make a game of it. How many of them can you guess before the clock runs out? Feel free to shout your answers at the screen. Google's always listening, so it's probably great for the algorithm. Let's start with an easy one. You saw this cheerful fellow in the opening. Is it A, Zebo, B, Pennywise, C, Plucky Pennywhistle, or D, Kathy Griffin? If you said that this was B, Pennywise the Dancing Clown from the movies It and It Chapter 2, congratulations! You aren't part of the Losers Club. Movie Pennywise has a uniquely dumb clown design that misses its own point. He's meant to gain kids' trust by looking like a normal, harmless clown. But any kid dumb enough to trust someone with glowing yellow eyes and a cracked, veiny forehead the size of a bar fridge deserves to get their arm bitten off. Now who might this be? Is it A, the Joker from The Dark Knight, B, the Joker from Suicide Squad, C, the Joker from Joker, or D, Jeffree Star's latest look? If your guess was C, Arthur Fleck, aka Joker from the movie Joker, then it looks like you did get it after all. Feel free to do a victory dance on some stairs or something. Hello little boy, do you want to hear a joke? Yeah, I like jokes. Ooh, what do you get when you cross a clown and an egg? I don't know, what? The yogurt. <laughs> now for egg number three. Is it A, Ronald McDonald, B, Donald McDonald, C, the poster from Super Size Me, or D, Pennywise's Mormon cousin? The answer is A, Ronald McDonald, the estranged mascot of McDonald's. At one time, Ronnie Mac was the most widely known fictional character on planet Earth, ahead of Mickey Mouse, Homer Simpson, and even Droopy McCool. He's been keeping a low profile lately, but maybe he'll make a comeback and finally rid the world of that disgusting minion wannabe Happy Meal. Alright smart guy, maybe you knew those last ones, but try this on for size. Is this A, Pongo the Clown, B, Patches the Clown, C. Pickles the Clown, or D. Poggers the Clown. This is B. Patches the Clown, though he also went by Pogo. 
If neither of those ring any bells, you still get a point if you picked his real name, John Wayne Gacy, the notorious serial killer who was also a party clown. Gacy was, at one time, America's most prolific serial murderer. Getting into further specifics would be a one-way ticket to demonetization station, but if you are interested in looking up what this guy got up to, I'd advise against doing it too close to mealtime. Here's another one for you. Is this A. Orville Shaggy Burrell, B. Shaggy Too Dope, C. Shaggy Rogers, or D. The Shaggy DA? guess was B, Shaggy 2 Dope of the Insane Clown Posse, then you were absolutely down to clown. If you also guessed that Shaggy 2 Dope was the dumbest name any musician has ever gone by, I would remind you that there is someone who calls themselves Lil Pump and is somehow still taken seriously as an artist. Well, you know, more or less. Now we're at a half dozen, so try catching this curveball. Is this A, Captain Peach Fuzz, B, Captain Pugwash, C, Captain Spaulding, or D, Captain Nazi. This is C, Captain Spaulding, from Rob Zombie's House of 1000 Corpses and its two sequels. You know, I think these clown eggs might have gone bad. Oh, why is that? They all float down here. <laughs> I must be funnier than I thought. He's the only clown with facial hair in today's quiz, which is a great segue to our sponsor, Dollar Shave Club. For a limited time, Dollar Shave Club is... just kidding. Selling out is one of my life goals, but I'm not there yet. So is this A, Robbie Rotten disguised as a clown, B, Sherlock Holmes disguised as a clown, C, James Bond disguised as a clown, or D, a clown disguised as Raggedy Ann? James Bond's clown disguise, which is also worn by Agent 009 in the 13th Bond film Octopussy. Yes, they did have the gall to call a movie by that name with a straight face. The 80s were a weird time, but at least it still makes more sense as a movie title than Quantum of Solace. How about this endearing fellow? Are we looking at A. Sicko the Clown, B. Twisty the Clown, C. Quirky the Clown, or D. The newest gritty reboot of the Joker. This is B, Twisty the Clown, from the fourth season of American Horror Story. Here's another character with a design that craters its own believability. He looks less like someone trying to dress like a clown and more like someone dressed as a Halloween decoration, ready to pull a hidden camera jump scare prank on some unsuspecting pedestrians. That's like, so 2016. Here's a real toughie. Is this A, Gunter Brecht from The Clown Who Cried, B, Gerhard Schuck from The Day the Clown Laughed, C, Hermann Glick from Laugh, Clown, Laugh, or D, Helmut Dork from The Day the Clown Cried? This is D, Helmut Dork, played by Jerry Lewis in The Day the Clown Cried. It's a film about a clown in a German prison camp during World War II that meets the Jewish kids in the concentration camp next door. Really cheerful, uplifting stuff. If you've never heard of it, that might be because the movie never actually released. It turns out that clowns in concentration camps do not a tasteful movie make. Shocker. I've got one for you. What do you get when you cross a mentally ill loner with a society that abandons him and treats him like trash? Oh, I've heard this one before. The punchline really knocked him dead. <laughs> <laughs> Is this cheerful fellow A, Art the Clown, B, Mort the Clown, C, Bert the Clown, or D, the Green Goblin disguised as a mime from an episode of the 1960s Spider-Man cartoon? to A, Art the Clown, from All Hallows Eve and Terrifier. I really like his stark black and white design. I really dislike literally everything else about this character. He's disgusting, he's depraved, and worst of all, he sort of looks like an overzealous contestant from RuPaul's Drag Race without their wig on. Is this A, Pennywise from a 1990s It miniseries, B, Pennywise from a 1990s It movie, 
C. Pennywise from a 1990s IT TV show. Or D. Pennywise from a 1990s Burger King Pennywise cheaper options menu commercial tie-in. If you have deja vu right now, then perhaps you guessed that this is A. Pennywise the Dancing Clown, as portrayed by Tim Curry in the 1990 miniseries. This design is definitely more believable than the recent films, as he at least looks like a real human being. But it still doesn't make a child obliviously befriending a creepy psychic clown in a storm drain much more plausible. Why, it's almost as if Stephen King's dodgy plotting is absurdly overrated or something. Well, here's the last one. Is this A, Donald Trump, B, Bonald Flump, C, Ronald Clump, or D, Monald Stump? If you went and blurted out any particular president of the United States, then you were quite wrong. You're watching an egregiously late Halloween special, not an egregiously late election special. This is C, the completely unrelated Ronald Clump. A lovable clown from Snoop Dogg's music video for Lavender Nightfall Remix, in which Snoop mimed shooting a gun at Ronald, which caused absolutely no controversy whatsoever. So how many clowns did you recognize? Let us know in the comments. And hey, we got through the whole thing without once caving to the urge to make any corny egg puns. I bet you didn't expect that, son of a... Gun. Let's play a game. I'll draw someone famous, and the first three people to guess who it is in the comments get a shout out when I tell you the answer in the next episode. If your guess last time was the internet's favorite Ray-Ban enthusiast, Casey Neistat, you are absolutely correct. I thought Morewood get it, and Morewood did. Matthew Morewood Media, alliterating his way to first place. Braden Hager, who has likely been mispronounced for neither the first nor last time today, took second. And DDSB definitely did speculate successfully, brother, landing third place. Well done everyone, thanks for playing. Today's subject almost has more nostril than nose, and their beady eyes resemble a pair of runaway boba, narrow set beneath a stern brow. In stark contrast with these paltry proportions, this person's most notable feature is a mouth so large, their favorite party game is bobbing for watermelons. Not only is it broad enough to require a small charter plane to get from one end to the other, but the lips themselves are as full as James Corden's fursuit. Their cheeks are hollow like a celebrity's threats to move country if the wrong person wins an election. And the addition of long bedraggled hair puts the final touch on their resemblance to somebody's grandmother. Now who could this be? If you know who that was, let us know in the comments. Now I'd like to give a very special thanks to Just Jargon, who recently made a video shouting out my channel. The result being this late Halloween special has suddenly turned into an early thousand subscribers special. I'm absolutely blown away. Thanks to all of you who subscribed after watching that video, and to everyone else watching, I highly recommend checking out Just Jargon and all of their fantastic work. Link is in the description. This has been The Harry Gold Show, so until next time, stay safe, and God bless.